Okay, well, we will get started. So as I said before, welcome everyone. I hope you're uh, you're doing well and your family is doing well in this uh, COVID era. And it's our pleasure to, to meet virtually today to talk more about embryos and what embryos can do as a genetic solution for, uh, for our clients and different countries. So thank you for your time. And just before we start, I would like to do a few housekeeping items uh, to make sure this presentation goes well. So if you have any questions for the flow of the presentation, we will answer them at the end of the presentation, but feel free to enter them in the question box uh, located on the webinar. So we will try to answer all the questions uh, that will come to us. So thank you for your participation. Um, as I said before, my name is Danny Rondo. I'm the vice president of the embryo division, and I'm leading the CMEX Global Embryo Sales and working also on the embryo production aligning uh, production and sales uh, together as one focus and one goal uh, all together. Next slide. Uh, today we have uh, Laura DeKlein uh, that joined uh, the embryo division on January 1st, 2021. Uh, she will talk about our different embryo options. She is our embryo sales specialist. She's focusing on driving embryo sales, uh, putting packages together of biopsied embryos, uh, working on the marketing side of things also, and as a contact for the Canadian embryos that we sell around the world on behalf of, of breeders. Uh, we have a very special guest speaker today in uh, Jordan Fisher from New York, USA, uh, that he will talk about his experience with uh, investing in CMEX embryos. Uh, Jordan, as you will see a little bit later in the presentation, manages a, a very successful dairy farm in New York uh, with uh, 3,000 cows and 5,500 acres of land. And he's gonna explain how we engage technology in maximizing talent development through various sections of the farm business. So we're very pleased to have Jordan with us today. And last but not least, we have uh, Dr. Christian Vigneault, uh, which is our Director of Continuous Improvement at Bovitech. Uh, he's a driving force behind innovative technologies developed at Bovitech. You might have heard of how our embryo freezing expertise or we're world leaders in this with genotype embryos and we do also direct embryo transfer with IVF embryos that comes from Christian and his leadership and his team that developed these technologies over the year. So today our agenda will talk about uh, the different options that we have uh, for, our, for our clients. Uh, we have CMEX embryos, we have biopsied embryos, elite and genetics. We have a new program that we're quite excited about named Embryos on Demand, and my colleague Laura uh, will go more in details about this. Uh, we have, will have Jordan speak about his experience with embryos as a genetic solution. And we'll talk also uh, with Christian from a technical standpoint, the uh, embryo, IVF embryo risk and rewards. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are fully transparent with our clients. And at the end, if you can bear with us, we will have a Q&A session that you can ask questions directly to any of the, the speakers today. So why? So the questions we get is why do we? Why should we consider uh, CMEX embryos? Well, first of all, they are a very unique product. Uh, we have embryos, um, you know, that are exclusive product. They're female embryos. Uh, they can be part of a genetic strategy and enhancing profitability. And that's something really important for us. Is embryos have to generate an ROI for for our customers, and we strongly feel that the packages that we can put together, uh, being female embryos. Uh, can really generate a return investment for, for our clients. And truthfully, uh, as we know, the genetic industry right now, it's hard to get access to the, the top genetics in North America. But with this, uh, it gives us a chance to, uh, to have access to the top 1% of North American's best genetics delivered to your farm uh, for your genetic program. And as I said before, it's female embryos. So we are quite excited about this to provide the kind of animals that you need for your farm and that can excel on your dairy. Next slide, please. So something we have to do as a genetic company is to demonstrate uh, genetic gain. And I'm, qu I'm quite proud to share this slide and we can use different indexes, but for this example, we've used LPI uh, to demonstrate the genetic gain. So LPI is the Canadian index to rank male and females. And what we've done, we broke it down in the top 25% LPI cows in this herd versus the lowest 25% LPI cows in this herd. 
And what we can see is that the highest LPI, the highest indexes cows, were also the highest producing animals on milk. We see on the 305 milk average in kilos, they were averaging 11,314 kilos versus the lowest 25% of the herd were averaging 9,747 kilos of milk. So for the same program, the same management, the same feeding, the cows with higher index uh, were averaging 1,500 kilos more in the same lactation and 99 kilograms of fat more in the same environment. So this is where truly we can calculate a return on investment by investing in top genetics and investing in embryos that are gonna be in the top, not only the top 25% of most herds, it'll be in the top five or the top 1% of the herd to really see the genetic impact of an embryo strategy. So what we pride ourselves at CMAX is really to put the client in the middle of everything that we do, in the center of everything that we do at CMAX. And we're very strongly focused on bringing solutions for the needs of our clients. And what we wanna do, we wanna have as many solutions as possible to make sure that we meet uh, we meet your needs. So we have different solutions that you've heard before as Immunity Plus, uh, disease resistant genetics. We have a mating system uh, in Optimate. We have CMEX works. We have Elevate that can help us identify the females for uh, an IVF program in the future, for example. We also give you access to Progenesis, which is CMEX elite donors uh, by providing embryos that we are talking today from CMEX uh, bull mothers that we have currently on the program. Uh, we have also Dairy Track to help us track performance of our clients and our da dairies. And the last tool we want to talk about also today is Bovitech as an IVF uh, solution for our clients. So really trying to put everything together into a concise uh, value-added solution for our clients. Uh, so today, with uh, the exciting part also, uh, since you are attending, we are quite excited to offer a draw uh, for all attendees. There's an exclusive draw to win a package of 10 female embryos. They're genotype embryos. We know the female and we know the genetic value, and they are averaging 2850 GTPI and 750 net merit. So very high genetic level, and whether you prefer GTPI or net merit, uh, that's a very exciting uh, genetic level that we are offering you as a draw today. So best of luck to everyone. And um, I will pass on now to, uh, to my colleague, Laura, uh, that will talk about the different options. Thanks, Danny. And thank you everyone for tuning in today. It's an exciting time. I'm just gonna navigate you all through some of our exciting and exclusive embryo options that are available today, right now, um, and for just a few minutes. As Danny mentioned, we always put our clients at the forefront of everything we do. One of those solutions is CMEX Embryos, and it's the reason we're on this global webinar today. And we're just gonna dive deeper into the embryos themselves, the ones we have on offer, and the transparent results that come along with them. Some of the embryo options as listed here are our embryos on demand, the Progenesis Biopsy Genetic Embryos, the Progenesis Biopsy Elite Embryos, those are the three embryo options we have today. Uh, different options for different goals and strategies within your herd. Um, there's lots of options, flexible and customizable options that can help you develop, reach, or optimize your genetic goals. And there really is something for everyone, and we can adapt a different genetic strategy around the world um, utilizing these CMEX embryos. Beginning with the first of two options to discuss today, the biopsied embryos. These are embryos we have readily available and produced. And currently, CMEX is the only source for genotyped embryos uh, because they are exclusive to the market uh, and no company is currently offering them. A bit more about the biopsied embryos themselves. With biopsied and genotyped embryos, you know what you're buying in terms of both genetic value and the sex of the embryo. Biopsy meaning that they're determined to be 99% female. And then also with the genotype, we know the genetic results of each individual embryo and provide this data to you. Having the biopsy done ensures you have a 99% 99% or next to perfect chance of having a heifer calf on the ground compared to about 90% with sac semen. So as there is a next to perfect confirmed female heifer calf. Um, we also know what to expect when they're expecting in terms of genetic value. 
Regarding availability, uh, new biopsied embryos are added and produced monthly and are offered in tiers, uh, elite and genetic. These elite and genetic embryos are made up uh, into packs, and I'll talk about the packs shortly here. But lastly, for ordering packs themselves, it is a first come, first serve basis. So if you do have interest in anything listed or a pack itself, be sure to secure it as soon as possible with your local representative. Beginning with the elite packs, elite packs are the top genetics we have to offer. This, in, this is an example of one of our recent packs offered in April with the gray bar at the bottom representing the packs table, um, the averages for all 10 embryos within the pack for each um, genetic criteria. In general, majority, if not all elite packs are averaging above 2,900 for TPI and within the top 1% of North American genetics. So a very impressive group we have to offer, and this is just one of many packs we have available. Obviously, many different combinations available for you to choose from. Uh, with the genotype provided for each individual embryo, there really is something for everyone to look at depending on your genetic strategy. Uh, and this is only a snapshot of the genetic um, material and index criteria we provide for the packs, but more is available in our inventory files that we um, have available. This is an example of one of our genetic packs recently listed. We wanted to give you all a real life example of what exactly is offered each month for each pack type. Genetic packs are also a great way to accelerate the herd genetically being within the top 5% of North American genetics. And all of these genetic packs we have on offer typically average over or above 2,800 TPI, so just below the elite packs. Uh, in a few short moments, Jordan Fisher is gonna be speaking on his experience and investment with these biopsied embryo genetic packages. But overall, both elite and genetic embryo packs are an excellent opportunity to accelerate genetics or be a part of your herd's genetic strategy within only nine months. You're seeing these results. With our IVF embryos, you're receiving both a new generation of females to the herd to accelerate genetics and progress it even quicker. And package types are really based on your preference and needs. One other thing to mention is that a large portion of our embryos are made with sires as listed here that may not be accessible in semen or have very limited semen. So this is an excellent opportunity to gain access to these sires quickly and will almost guarantee a female calf on the ground. Uh, sex semen on the best bulls is typically often hard to find or get early in a bull's career. So this is just another opportunity with our IVF program. You can get access to these bulls much sooner. I'm just gonna transition now into the second CMEX embryo option, another opportunity for embryos. Uh, and this program is called Embryos On Demand. Separate from the biopsied embryos, this program was another unique offering we created. And it was designed because we wanted to provide you with a lot of quality product in your hands uh, within a very short period of time and a solution that is also fully customizable. With Embryos On Demand, it will allow your farm to continue and accelerate your genetic goals and specific breeding objectives. Like it says here, it is a fully customizable genetic solution for your farm. So this is allowing a huge opportunity for you to set and then achieve those specific goals within your herd. Uh, and I'll just go through this program a bit more on the next slide. Here are some donors that we currently have available for the Embryos On Demand program right now. All of these donors are chosen because we know that they are both excellent producers and have top quality genetics. We handpick them directly from our program. A lot of these donors are A2A2, A1A2, um, are above 2,900 TPI, and I believe a few of them are even within the top uh, PA LPI in Canada. Um, a lot of these donors and elite donors that we have on this program will also be full brothers in AI. So it's an excellent opportunity to have access to these elite donors, no strings attached, and confidence knowing that they are from strong families that make up our CMAX Bowl lineup. This group of donor changes about every one to two months, allowing for fresh genetics and fresh donors. So be sure to take advantage of the donors added or available at each time. And this is a very exciting and new program to say the least. A lot of different opportunities with these donors to deliver results and progress for your needs. 
just one more slide on embryos on demand from me and a bit more about the program itself. These embryos are donors from our internal program, Progenesis. And so just another exclusive opportunity because we're providing you with an opportunity to handpick specific genetics within the Progenesis program via these elite donors. The embryos are IVF embryos, as are the biopsied, and we are proud to say that all the embryos produced from this program have an immunity plus parent average above zero, which is a huge herd immunity and health advantage in itself. All of the embryos on demand are made with sex semen and based on your specific needs. So if you have a goal to go, say, full A2A2 or pulled, um, if you have an emphasis on two or more thresholds genetically, we're able to handpick these matings to do so, um, and we can definitely make that happen for you. In terms of production, it's three months or 90 days between production and shipping, so a very quick turnaround, especially with such a customizable program, hence embryos on demand. So please feel free to contact myself or your CMEX representative to learn more about how you can customize embryos with this program, or please feel free to continue to ask questions in the questions panel of the GoToWebinar. This concludes my portion of the presentation on our embryo offerings. Uh, so two very exciting programs that we're very proud to have on offer for you all today. And I'm just gonna hand the presentation over to Jordan Fisher now of Mapleview to speak about his farm and genetic program and how he applied CMEX embryos on his dairy. The audience is now yours, Jordan, and thank you everyone for listening. Thanks, Laura, and uh, thanks for having me today. We're gonna to start off today with just a brief farm history, uh, an overview, just the farm, the repro program, uh, and what things look like on the farm today. Get into YET and really why genetics, why we think it's worth investing in genetics and, and why we're pushing so heavily on that. And then a little bit of results, our experience with CMX embryos, uh, the things we liked, some of the concerns, some of the things we didn't realize going into it maybe, and conclude after that. So farm history, our family came to the Madrid, New York area in 1822 from Scotland, and then steady growth uh, throughout with uh, different generations coming back, my great, great grandparents, grandparents, and so on. Uh, now my brother joining and myself uh, in 2019. If we move to uh, the next slide, please. So as it sits today, 3,000 cows, uh, 2,450 of Holsteins, producing roughly 90 pounds of milk today. Um, 550 Jersey milk cows, about 58 pounds, just over a 5% fat. Also have 2,750 head of young stock. Um, so the dairy is one site and the young stock is, is situated on another site. I'll get to that on the next slide here, but we also work 5,500 acres of uh, cropland, corn silage, alfalfa, grass haylage, and a little bit of our corn grade needs uh, for the dairy herd. On the next slide, talk, we'll talk a little bit about forest view heifers. That's our heifer facility. Um, manage about 3,400 heifers, 65% of those being our own and 35% of those being custom raised for other dairies. Uh, they come in in about uh, 60 days, 60 to 90 days and stay until five weeks uh, before calving. We do extensive ET work at uh, both sites as far as implants. Talk a little bit next about our repro programs. Lactating cows are on a pre-sync, off-sync, 100% timed AI on the first service. Lactation one, two, and three all receive an embryo um, as long as they have a, a good CL and, and everything seems to be going fine as far as their transition period. The first and second lactation then are followed up with a service of sex semen and then we move to beef after that. Uh, lactation three and greater go to beef immediately following uh, the one ET. So for the year, I just pulled some, some parameters on repro to give an idea. Heat detection rate, 73%, conception rate, 44%, and preg rate, 30%. We utilize AFI milk uh, for activity as well as tail, tail paint in the milk cows. On the heifers, uh, we're doing a combination of one to two services uh, with, for, with an embryo and at following that with a service of sex semen and then moving to beef. So to line up recips, we do a fair amount of fresh em embryos as well as frozens. We use a combination of prostaglandin, cedar sink, and natural heats uh, all work together to, uh, to get that one to two services with an embryo. So for the year, heat detection rate, 74%, conception rate, 45%, pregnancy rate, 32%. 
we utilize SCR ear tags. Um, as you can see, we, we have some room to improve on that, on that preg rate, but we are pushing pretty heavily on the embryos. Next slide, please. So we're going to move next into uh, why we're why we're pushing the embryo program and the genetics so heavily. Um, I chose two graphs to kind of give a, a demonstration at what what we see moving forward in the future and what we hope to gain. So if we move to the next slide, it's a graph of uh, third lactation milk. And what we did was we took genomic data that we had, didn't have any first or second. So today I'm going to show lactation third, uh, excuse me, lactation three and lactation two. So 500 pound increments of milk, starting with the negative group, then going zero to 500, 500 to 1,000, and 1,000 plus. So you can see pretty drastic differences here, um, especially on peaks, but also throughout the lactation. So for every 500 pounds of predicted milk, um, we're actually getting more like 2,000 to 2,500 in those third lactation cows. And that's a pretty big increase just by with no different management, no not doing anything different to cows, just difference in genetics. You can see a difference of 124 pounds of peak all the way up to 152 on the highest group. So pretty interesting. If we move to the next slide on second lactation, see it's slightly lower, but still a pretty large difference, uh, 1,400 to 2,400 pounds, depending on the interval. And this really drove home for us, um, again, with no different management, why we think we need to focus so heavily on on genetics and using genomics, embryos, combination of sex semen, all these things to achieve our goals. We also probably could have looked at health traits, different things like that, reproduction. Um, milk is obviously the number one driver for most of us. Um, so this is this is the one that we looked at and the one I chose to show today. But I think probably um, it relates DPR, uh, productive life, all these other traits. And uh, so this is why we're why we've decided to invest so heavily. Moving next into our experience with CMEX embryos. So there are a few different things that drew us to the CMEX embryos um, originally. The first one, Laura talked a little bit about 99% female. You'll see in a few slides here, we were actually 100% female. But for us planning our heifer inventories, uh, managing our young stock and the makeup of those, that was a really useful tool because we knew when we had the pregnancies, as long you know, taking out the DOAs and the abortions, we knew what we had coming for heifers and what that accounted for genetically in our young stock group that we were developing. The value for the genetic gain. Um, so these embryos, uh, we were on the uh, genetic packages, not the elite. So we knew that these weren't going to be um, super, super high level. These weren't going to end up being uh, dams of, of sires, things like that. But we were trying to raise the bar on our herd for, for our commercial milking uh, needs in our dairy. So for the investment, we really felt like we were getting good genetic gain. And I'm going to go through a table of what we saw compared to AI calves here in a few minutes. One thing is I was preparing for this, talking to, to our team here about putting these in. One of the things that came up was the individual canes. So these embryos came mostly in individual canes. So we did require a lot of space. So that's one thing to think about and management as far as uh, data, keeping track of the stage and quality of these embryos, who they were, all those sorts of things. So just one thing to consider. One thing we didn't think about in the beginning, but became really obvious after we got going and saw the paperwork coming in the the calves starting to come on the ground was the genetic diversity. So we were after it, after the embryos to try to push our genetic gain. But what came with that was a lot of diversity and Laura referenced it earlier as well, but we got access to sires that we probably would have never been able to get to and certainly not that quickly, as well as cow families. Um, and it allowed us to get a bunch of different families, a bunch of different genetics that uh, we probably wouldn't have had access to otherwise. The numbers will move a little bit. So we have obviously genomic data on all these embryos when they're purchased. And one thing that we noticed was um, some started popping up quite a bit higher than what, what we thought they were going to. And I'm sure the same was for the lower ones. Um, but as a group, they all came out almost exactly where we where we predicted. And again, we'll go through that in the table. But one thing that was one thing that, that stood out to us a little bit was with base changes and formula changes and all these things. They did move a little bit. Um, but again, the group is exactly where we where we wanted them to be, and that I think is the most important part. 
And then obviously, I'm sure everyone's thinking about it, but the cash flow, that's the that's one of the biggest things. Um, you know, obviously tough to make that investment on a cash flow basis. We tried to think of it as more of a, an investment, a capital expense kind of, if you will. Um, it's a little bit tough uh, to make the numbers work when you're looking at three, four, five years out before you get lactations on these cows and can see a return on investment. But based on the milk uh, that we saw on our herd, um, that we, that's how we're using to base that decision and really push and justify spending the money, whether it's really good sex semen, embryos, all these things. So moving into the genetic gain and the results uh, on these embryos that we that we purchased, I'm going to start off with a table of genetic gain. Um, I just picked milk, fat, protein, net merit, and TPI. Those are some of the things we look at. Obviously, milk, fat, and protein being the biggest drivers, but um, took a group, this is a grand of small group of AI calves that we had the same age as these 141 um, embryo calves from CMEX and looked at the differences of what we see to get an idea what progress we're making. So milk on the embryo calves is about 1,000 pounds and on the AI calves, similar age, were 600 pounds. So about a 400 pound increase, 67%. Fat, about 20 pounds and protein, 17. Um, doesn't seem like much as far as fat and protein pounds, but when you think about it as a percentage, it's a pretty strong gain very, very quickly. Net merit. So we, we looked at this a little bit just to get an idea of where some of those other traits, you know, productive life and DPR and some of the other things. Um, 175 points of gain on similar age calves is pretty strong, 41%. TPI, 11%, 262 points. So again, overall, for calves that are on the ground, same age, going to come into the herd, we have really high hopes. Um, if we can really see 400 pounds more milk, 20 more pounds of fat, especially if, if they actually deviate more than that, which is what our original data would suggest based on AFI, we think that we could have a really strong return on investment here. Obviously, won't know that till those cows are, you know, calves are in the herd milking maybe two, three years out, but gives us a really strong indication of where we think we're going with this. Now that we talked about the genetics, move into the performance um, reproductively of these embryos. So I took all the embryos that we bought that we had been able to follow data through and we had live calves um, all the way through. So total embryos implanted, 464. Pregnant at 30 days, we had 202. So 44% conception overall in all of those embryos. And you'll see in the, in the next few slides, um, we had some pretty big ups and downs, but the, the average came out at 44. Abortions, 30, so 6%. Stillbirths, 10, which is 2%, which we were really, really happy with. We expected maybe a bit higher than that. That's actually below our herd average. And these embryos were mostly implanted in heifers, so really happy with that number. Recipients sold or died, 5, so 1%. So total live calves on the ground, which is really all that matters at the end of the day, uh, 157 for 34%. So we move into the next slide, that will break it down a little bit. You can see we started off in August and we finished in May with just a few numbers towards the end. Um, but this really demonstrates the, um, different, the what the embryos can really do. So October, for example, is our best month, 57% conception. We were really happy with that. Things were going really well. Um, and really the first several months you can see, um, we were averaging between 42 and 57, so really strong. You can see going into the winter um, and spring, we really dropped off a little bit. And so we had some management challenges. Uh, one of the things that we learned from this, probably I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, but it really drives that return on investment. You can see percent live calves, obviously. Um, the return in October when we had 43% live calves compared to say December with 22%, really can impact things quickly. So um, that was one of the takeaways was we probably would would probably slow down a little bit on the implants. You can see we did uh, 90 in October and we kept going even though we were dropping a little bit. We probably could slow that up a little bit, try to get our repro straightened out a little and then pick it back up to, to increase that return on investment. Some concluding thoughts. Um, like I just get, just said, uh, change usage based on performance. So when we were 57% conception, obviously a much greater ROI. We had more live calves coming out of those embryos that we purchased. 
and we probably also would distribute the implants a little more evenly so when we had good conception we had lots of implants a high percentage of our heifer crop then was going to be resulting in et calves whereas some of the poor uh, months on conception would have been more uh, sex semen or beef so we probably need to as we go along in the future that was one of the things that came out of this was we're going to try to even that out and try to get our genetics to be a little bit more steady throughout as these calves are born because then we can use that in the future whether we use sex semen on those rather than being a recipient or we flush some of them things like that so to try to even out that those genetics being born all told we we achieved the goals we set again these numbers really reflected what we had predicted in the beginning based on genomics the real roi will be calculated after a few lactations on these animals but for now the genetic information we have on these calves that are on the ground and actually some are getting close to breeding are really really close to what we predicted when we originally purchased the embryos and decided to move forward with this another thing that stood out that's worth talking about is the the data management plan so we maybe underestimated um, exactly how much effort and time and energy was gonna need to go into keeping track of the sire, the dam, the quality, the stage, the performance of these embryos, what calves actually were born, getting the genetic information in, making decisions on are those gonna then receive an embryo or are they gonna be high enough that we put sex semen or do we flush some of these? Just the overall data management plan is something that maybe we didn't really understand going into it and it's required a lot of time and energy. We think it's still worth it, but it's just something that to take consideration. Our team has done an awesome job, um, spreadsheets, dairy, uh, dairy comp, all these things, but it is, it is a lot of effort uh, to maximize the return and the genetic gain on these. So with that, that will conclude my presentation and we'll turn it over to Danny. Well, first of all, on behalf of everybody here, uh, Jordan, thank you very much for uh, sharing your experience and uh, being very open about, you know, the performance that you got and the, the results uh, with embryos. So uh, if you can stay with us at the end, I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, questions that will be directed to you. And I think that would be great for the audience to ask the questions directly to you. So thanks again for, for being here today. Um, now moving on, we wanted also to, to talk about uh, our embryo production center, Bovitech, but also the, uh, the risk with embryos and rewards. So we wanted to be, again, it's very important for us to be transparent and to be honest. And there's no better person than this for, uh, to have a technical um, explanation from uh, Dr. Christian Vigneault. So Christian, all to you. Thank you, Danny. So um, just uh, thank you, everyone. Um, just to give a bit of a background, Bovitech started almost 30 years ago. And in the beginning, it was a research department. Um, technologies were developed and to a certain point where there was a shown interest in the field to get those technologies applied to uh, breeding improvements. So and this is where the initiative to launch commercial, to launch a Bovitech commercially um, started. And since then, um, it, we kept that research philosophy to kind of trying to always improve the system, and that's why I'm that's what I'm I would talk about here. And so over those 20 plus years, we have now experience on more than 20 breeds, different breeds, and almost 30 now. And we came to a point where we are the leader in embryo production, so we are renowned to produce more embryo per donor and also the better quality on the market where we can freeze a good two thirds of our embryos with good pregnancies rate. So next slide, please. This map shows you the, the evolution of Bovitech over the recent last years. Um, so it's in 2012 and 13 that we launched the first, uh, our second lab actually that, that is now in Madison, Wisconsin in the US. And so you can see in 2012, the few centers in red where we had cow aspirated in the field and the oocyte were shipped to the lab, uh, which is shown by the green uh, marks. But on the left, uh, on the right uh, map, you can see what, where we are today. So every, and we have a couple more added since that, uh, that graph, but um, you can see that we have much, much more locations now and we are really spread around the North America. With the success that we've had with our system. Next slide, please. 
So as I said, it changed a lot. When I joined Movie Tech in 2008, um, the system was really, really, really different. Back then, I remember we were getting quite a bit of a phone calls about calving problems and calf issues and big, large calves. Um, but this has changed quite significantly with the improvement we've made to the media. Um, so as I said, we're constantly changing the system and it came, we, we came to a point where we reduced significantly the calving problems. And as Jordan said, he, he, he did have a very good experience with the calvings on his farm. Uh, we brought the technology to the farm. So it's now possible to aspirate on farm and send the oocyte to our lab and we send back the embryos to the breeders. Um, we have improved quite significantly the feasibility of those. And we are now, as I said before, the leader in, in this sense. And actually, we, it's, it's really not significant. Um, the pregnancies are not really affected by the freezing of our technology. If you would take a fresh Bovitec embryo and you will freeze a nice fresh Bovitec embryo, you will freeze it. You will not measure any noticeable decrease in pregnancies uh, from our embryos. And finally, one of the things that we have implemented to more recently is the biopsy of those embryos to get the genomic information, freeze them after the biopsy and be, being able to implant them after the results. Um, and this is what we propose you today also in the packages. Those embryos are produced through that technology. But we're not done yet. Um, we are continuously improving. And that's what I'm working on now. And this is my role. And I have a team with me to improve that because it's still not perfect. So we want to be really transparent with you in that sense that um, it's not, not all sunshine and rainbows and everything would go as, as planned all the time. Um, this is the, the data you should expect when you, you use IVF embryos today. And, and we're just working hard to kind of make it them better and improve those. So as a start, you should expect 45% of pregnancies around day 60 uh, to confirm the pregnancies when you're using our frozen embryos. And our technology is super easy to use in the farm. It's using regular transfer of in vivo, like you would use with in vivo embryos. So when all the procedures are followed the same as they would use with normal regular flush embryo, this is the pregnancies that um, people should expect. What can be seen after the fact, after the confirmed pregnancies, is up to 8 to 10% abortion through the entire gestation uh, length uh, uh, up to the calving date. Um, some will see lesser than less abortion than that, but it can be, um, some might see that high of abortion through the whole uh, nine months of pregnancy. After when come when you come to birth, um, you 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 can get up to eight to ten percent of losses around birth and the first days after the birth. And but it's it's number you can you can get better than that sometimes too. As Jordan said, he had a really good experience. But we're just showing the kind of a worst case scenario that people should uh, take into account when they jump into the the game of IVF embryos. We also have a lot of recommendation for you guys for the people that would like to. To, to, to purchase embryo and go into the IVF game to really make the, the, um, the experience better. So like never go over due date is one really important point we want to, um, that you're, you take into account. So if you see that some recipients will not show any calving signs at due date, we really recommend to induce the calving of those recipients. And so it's gonna be the best for the recipient and also the calf, and it will av avoid ex extending the, the gestation and get larger calves um, because of that reason. And finally, um, one could expect up to 3% of what's considered large calves from uh, our IVF embryos at the moment. And um, yeah, so, but all that said, I mean, we still believe and strongly that the gain worth the risk. So again, we want to be really transparent and those are the today's number and constantly improving years after years. And then you will, will show you how then, when you invest in those embryo, you can combine that with other technologies that we can offer to really maximize the return on investment of that first investment you will make with those purchased embryos. Well, thank you very much, Christian. And I think for us, it's uh, as Christian said, it's to be transparent. And Christian will remain available for your, your questions 
uh, at the end of the presentation. If you have any concerns, it's important that uh, you ask the experts directly. And as you've seen, Christian is somebody that's, you know, very transparent, very passionate about providing solutions and honest answers to our clients. So feel free to ask questions. And I take the opportunity before I talk about my last few slides that uh, questions started to come in. So if you do have questions, please start typing, typing them in uh, the question box and we will do our best to answer uh, the questions. So a couple uh, slides uh, to finish about uh, the presentation today. We want to talk about you know improving the herd rapidly with embryos and IVF. And it's truly, we're quite excited about this, uh, the embryos as a solution for your, for, for your herd. So we could use embryos as part of a strategy along with other strategies already in place in your herd. It doesn't mean we have to remove totally sex semen usage or beef semen usage. If you've seen on the, on the graph on the left, uh, we could transfer embryos in our lower genetic animals and still some of them as Jordan is doing using beef semen on the lower hen animals and using sex semen on the best animals and on the top, top ones, uh, we strongly recommend doing IVF embryo production from the top ones to transfer in our lower end animals. So it's really a combination of uh, strategies and tools available uh, for your dairy that is uh, the optimal solution. And what we want to do is to switch that bell curve more towards the right, towards the gen higher genetic level. And this is what we have to do as a herd. There's always going to be lower animals, higher animals, is how do we maximize the return from our highest animals in the herd. If we can multiply our highest animals, that's how we can really see genetic gain as Jordan has seen in his herd. Uh, moving on to the next slide. I just want to talk briefly. Uh, we're extremely proud of Bovitech, our embryo production center here. And we're pleased to say that we're going global now with, uh, with Bovitech. Uh, we have a partner in Senate in Brazil, uh, which is producing quite a bit of embryos as well. And also we started to establish licensees in uh, France, Switzerland, and UK. And uh, as you, I said, we are looking to go global with uh, a phenomenal technology. And as Christian explained, it's the best technology to produce IVF embryos that are of high quality and that generate pregnancies for our clients around the world. Just to give you an idea of the size of the program, Bovitech is not small. Uh, and Sanate together, they produced over 140,000 embryos just last year in 2020. So in one year, over 140,000 embryos. So I'm extremely proud of the team uh, that are currently working in the lab right now, and they do a phenomenal job uh, producing a lot of embryos. So thanks to everyone involved in this. Uh, the last slide, I wanted to do a quick summary uh, before we go to, uh, to answer some of the questions that came in. Uh, what we wanted to do is to uh, have different embryo types uh, for you, for your solution. We didn't want to be a one size fits, uh, fits all. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we have a product and we have a solution, whatever is your goal. For example, what I mean by this, if you want to do 100% A2, well, we can make 100% A2 embryos and within one generation, your herd can be 100% A2. Uh, if you want to focus on net merit, well, we have embryos for that as well. So we wanted to give optimal flexibility uh, for our clients. Uh, we're pleased and excited to have the exclusivity on genotype female embryos that we offer to the market. And they come from, uh, you know, top donors. And you've seen before uh, top sires also that uh, sometimes are not available to the market just because they don't produce enough semen. But you can buy female embryos from those top sires. What we like, we call them a customizable embryo. So really focus on your needs. And please contact Laura directly if you or your CMEX representative in your market and your country. Uh, talk about different solutions and we can come, come up with a customized approach for your needs. Uh, also, what's important? Yes, the genetic level has to be extremely important, but we need to make sure to create pregnancies. And we have the world leading uh, frozen embryo quality. So rest assured that uh, our frozen embryos are uh, delivering results day in and day out. And we will provide also technical information to make sure you get optimal results uh, transferring those embryos, such as recommendations of what's the best for uh, tr embryo transfer and all of that. As you've seen today, we have results in large dairy. So it's 
we have to change a little bit our thinking about embryos. It used to be in the past, you know, very exclusive for one special cow, but it has to be part of a genetic solution for large dairies. And we're very pleased to have a live example with, uh, with Jordan that did a tremendous job explaining his thought process and how it affect and impact his herd. And, you know, the future is very bright with the, the level of females that he has on the ground right now. Uh, we also have uh, direct transfer embryos, so similar to conventional embryos. That's a question that our clients often ask when they, before they purchase for the first time embryos, is, um, you know, is, uh, are they trans being transferred the same way as conventional embryos? And the answer is yes. So same process, same simple process. We wanted to simplify as much as we can the process. And last but not least, I think you've seen today a team as we want to be transparent. Uh, we want to be cohesive and approach to support your embryo investment. Uh, for us, it's important that you know uh, what to expect when transferring those embryos. Uh, you know that we are providing an excellent quality product, but also you know what are the risks uh, that go with it. And we are convinced that the, the rewards far outweigh the risk once we know those risks. So um, thank you everyone for your, uh, your time today. Uh, I'm pleased to see the time. We still have 15 minutes, uh, so we will be able to answer uh, some of the questions. So if I may ask the, the guest speakers to, to turn on their camera and unmute themselves, and we will uh, answer some questions. So uh, the first question, and not in specific order, but uh, Jordan, we had a question for you. Um, you know, we have though you have those efforts now on the ground from your embryo strategy. What is your plan now? Are you going to IVF them, use sex semen? What, what will you do with those efforts? Yeah, that's the big debate right now, what to do with those. So um, currently our strategy is going to be to use the best sex semen we can find on those. Um, we are IVFing some heifers at this point. I'm not sure how much of that we will do. We'll have to make that decision. But um, so a combination probably of sex semen and potentially identifying the highest for IVF. Okay, excellent. Uh, Christian, we have another question that come from you, for, for you, sorry. Uh, biopsy embryos versus non-biopsy. Can you confirm if the pregnancy rate change or it's the same? So uh, what we do is we select really carefully which one we biopsy to make sure we do not decrease the pregnancy rate of those embryos. And at the same time, the one we, we commercially make available are also the, the top of the biopsy embryo, if I can say. So we do not release any embryos that are kind of borderline that we might keep internally for our internal program to take a, a chance, kind of. Um, those are excluded from the offering. So we want to make sure that performances of, of pregnancies would be attained. So um, that's why uh, there would be no differences of what someone should see with regular frozen. Excellent, so no difference, that's really good. Yep. Um, couple of questions for, for Jordan. I'm trying to read the questions as they come. Um, you mentioned uh, historical gain in net merit. Um, you didn't, you know, you had net merit uh, that you mentioned, you know, increasing 41%. What was it compared to, to if you use semen or in the past or compared to U.S. herds? You know, what's your base for that? Yeah, so so looking back um, the last nine years on um, on Enlight, I looked up 61 points of net merit gain is what we had been traditionally gaining. So I, I don't remember exactly what that number was, but it was way more than that. Um, last three years has been about 80 points. So... <laughs> You look at that graph we actually are gaining on the embryos 175 so essentially skipping at least a generation if not more yep that's excellent um question my apologies the question disappeared but i think um laura if we want to receive updates on uh, cmex embryos what what's the process Uh, you're on mute, I think. Can you? Um, are you okay, Laura? Or maybe I, I come back to you. I'll ask a question to Jordan, and then I'll come back to you. Uh, Jordan, in your presentation, uh, you know, you had winter, so I'll read the question. Does winter, weather, winter affect conception rate and live effort percentage? 
aside from the months when count was very low, Jan, uh, January or February? Or did you yeah, see a so difference? I, yeah, I think that's a site specific thing. We tend to see a fair amount of cold stress where we are really cold temperatures and that facility itself tends to be quite cold. Um, there were some other management challenges going on as well. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the embryos. I don't think it has anything to do with the technicians, although we were training a new technician at that point to put embryos in. So I think it's just a combination of things. I can't say exactly for sure, but you can see, I mean, previous to that, 57% was pretty high. Um, so I, I have complete confidence in embryos and what we were doing. I think there's just some herd health and some management things going on at that time. Okay, thank you. Um, question, how long did it take to get this genetic gain when you were talking about a genetic gain? Um, it was one generation with the embryos, correct? Yeah, so I think the gain from uh, ET compared to AI cows was like 175, and we had traditionally been getting 60 to 80 every year. So, yep, a couple. Okay, perfect. Uh, Laura, are you, uh, are you back? Am I good? Perfect. Uh, yeah, so with regards to uh, finding out where you can find the most recent listing or what embryos are available, I strongly encourage you contact, you know, your local CMEX representative or someone uh, within your area if you have a local rep. Um, if not, then for sure go through uh, to our website, our corporate website, to our embryos tab um, and be sure to submit an inquiry um, and you can let us know what genomic specs you're looking for. Um, and just your contact information, we can get back to you as soon as possible and provide you with some options, whether it's the embryos on demand or the biopsied embryos or uh, whatever your needs are. Excellent. Maybe another question for you, Laura. Uh, what grade are the embryos that we are exporting? Are they all grade number one? Number all one of quality? our embryos are quality one embryos, yes. We don't, uh, we don't have anything less than that. We pride ourselves in Q1 embryos. Thank you. Um, while we're at it, uh, we have another question for you, Laura. Um, noticing the confirmation on most donor is mid to low single digits on LPI basis, I'm assuming. After a couple rolls rollbacks, these could become negative. Are you selecting donors with higher confirmation uh, numbers for future gains? So that pack was just an example of what we have to offer. There's also different packs with um, higher values or um, customizable packages as well, like I mentioned. So we're always improving our, our program and our offering. So yes, I think with time, um, and if we dive a bit deeper into what we have available, you'll definitely find something along those lines that you're looking for, uh, whether it's um, higher LPI uh, confirmation, um, somatic cell, um, we pretty much have something for everyone and can cater to whatever you need. Excellent. Uh, question for Christian and then Jordan after. Uh, does CMEX recommend individual farm tests to maximize conception rate? Do you recommend, you know, any herd specific tests before uh, you transfer embryos, Christian? Not really. We, we really um, want good recipients like in good body condition. Um, one thing that people need to be aware of the risk is, and it applies to every embryo transfer program is, is infections. So you don't want to get uh, have any problem with infections, vaginal infections and stuff. So the vets in charge of the herd should make sure that everything is in order in that, uh, on that aspect. But besides that, um, nothing special, uh, just good healthy recipients. And Jordan, I don't know if you had more to add. No, we, I mean, like I said, 100% time to AI with a shot program. Um, we check for a CL as long as they're in good health and have a good CL. We use them. We don't treat our recipients any differently than, than anyone else in the herd. Okay, so no no specific test, but I think it comes back to good management. If, if like you said, Jordan, when once where repro was going well and things were, were good, embryos will succeed. But if Repro is a challenge or there's some challenges in management and might be tougher for embryos to perform, right? Yep. Perfect. Another question for, for Jordan. Uh, what have you done differently in the management of the recipients? Uh, did you do anything different? Nutrition, comfort? Did you do 
anything? Uh, we're, you know, we're doing such a volume that, uh, yeah, we don't treat them any differently. Obviously, there's there's a lot of care put into um, just trying to do things right as it is, um, but we're not treating those cows any differently. They're out in the groups with everyone else and just trying to do the best we can do with everybody. Excellent. Uh, Christian, a question for you is, do we expect more abortions with embryos than with semen? Uh, and then the question is, what practices in, in heifer rearing reduce the risk for abortions? So yes, so unfortunately at the moment, um, you should expect more abortions than with semen. So the up to eight to 10% abortion through the entire uh, gestation is something that can be seen. Um, and what could decrease that or what could increase actually the abortion is really, as I said, the infections. So bad, I mean, bad recipient health and uterine health can be a problem and you can see some early, early losses. Uh, but besides that, again, good, medium, decent body condition, uh, good management, good nutrition. Um, and uh, yeah, you should expect like results as, as Jordan saw with the 6% abortions and, and good calving rates. Excellent. Um, looks like we uh, don't have any questions. So we'll, for the next 30 seconds, if you have any questions, it'll be great if you can send them in. Um, I don't know if uh, Jordan, you have any final comments, recommendations, or Christian to our our audience today about making embryos a success. I don't think so. Like I had said in the in the presentation, obviously it takes you know it takes some management time, it takes some effort um, working on improving everything as a whole, but. Uh, we don't manage the recipients any differently. Um, just try to do the best we can with them and try to manage the data the best we can to to increase the, the gain and capture everything that we're investing in. Yeah, and I will I will uh, encourage people that are kind of hesitating still today to look at IVF embryo to ask their CMEX rep to provide them the, the the information about how to how to use IVF embryos and all the details that we quickly went over with management of recipients. There's tons of information and details in that um, in that pamphlet. So um, do not hesitate to request that and we'll provide that to you. So uh, you can take a, a good decisions after the readings. Excellent, well, thank you. Thank you, Laura, for uh, your participation. Thank you, Christian. And again, thank you very much, Jordan, for joining us today. And openly sharing your experience, uh, the up and down. So it really works with our, um, you know, what we want to do, be transparent with our with our clients. So really thank you again uh, for your participation and thanks to everyone for, for joining today. Have a great day, everyone. And we wish you all the best and looking forward to see you in the future again when the time allows. Thank you, bye. Thank you.